Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. I'm Dr. Dawson, and today we are going to talk about what drugs we use to help control itch. Now, a lot of these end up actually being to help control inflammation associated with itch, but not all of them. And so I just wanna mention that just up front that some of them have dual function, but primarily we're trying to talk about ones that control itch in this video. The thing that this video is not intended to do is tell you which one you should use. This isn't me prescribing any medications for you or your dog. This is purely just me educating about what different options are out there so that you can have a little bit better discussion with your veterinarian about which of these options is maybe best for you and your pet. So the first drug that we're going to talk about is a steroid. Uh, there are other steroids as well, but the one that we primarily use or the one that we use most often is prednisone or prednisolone. And they're basically the same exact thing. They're used as an immunosuppressive and an anti-inflammatory. And with that anti-inflammatory, we end up having some control over itch. This is actually one of the oldest of the drugs that we're going to talk about and actually the oldest. It was first FDA approved for use in people in 1955. And so it's actually a fairly old medication as far, far as pharmaceuticals go. And it was widely used and still is widely used to this day, being the 21st most commonly prescribed drug in the US at least. It's a synthetic derivative of a hormone called cortisol. Now cortisol is a stress hormone and if you want, there's a couple videos I have up here that are talking about two different diseases related to that and I explain a little bit more in those videos about um, Addison's and Cushing's disease. So what's its method of action? Well, like I said, go look, check out those videos if you wanna have more detail, but essentially it's a corticosteroid which works on quite a few different body systems as a messenger. And it, the way it does this is it helps with inflammation, it helps with the body handling stress. It also has some action related to the liver, to the kidneys, and a whole bunch of other things. So what are the pros of this medication? Well, this medication is a very inexpensive anti-itch drug. It has a very long history of use, and it is very, very effective. However, some of the cons include that it has a very broad mechanism of action and it affects a lot of different body systems. Some of the most significant being the liver, the kidneys, um, it can cause behavioral changes and it can cause an increased appetite, just to name a few. A lot of times we'll also see uh, PUPD, which is polyuria, polydipsia. Your dog is drinking and peeing a lot. This drug may increase the susceptibility to infections and if you use it in a fungal infection situation, it can cause a severe overgrowth of the fungus uh, just because of the very mild immunosuppressive activity that it has. Now, the next drug that I'm going to talk about is a drug called Apoquil. Now, Apoquil is the brand name for the drug. I'm not even gonna try to pronounce the actual drug name uh, because as of right now, there are no generics out there, so it's not really that important. Now, this drug was first approved in 2013 uh, by the FDA, and it is a very, very good medication at preventing it. The method of action of Apoquil blocks expression of a signaling molecules that induce inflammation. So it's considered a JAX1 inhibitor. I'm not gonna get into the whole JAX kinase uh, pathway, but know that it helps stop the signaling of a lot of inflammatory signaling molecules. So these would be IL-1, IL-4, IL-6, a whole bunch of other ones as well. And it basically reduces inflammation very selectively, more selectively than say a corticosteroid like prednisone, and also very, very effectively. Now the pros of this is that it has a very selective signal blockage. It has very few side effects. There's good evidence for safe use in the short term. Now, one of the challenges with this is that it is expensive at the moment. Like I said, there are no generics on the market right now. There probably will be at some point, but there aren't right now. The other major disadvantage to this medication is that this class of drugs has been shown in people and in animals to potentially increase the risk of certain types of neoplasia or cancer. Now, a lot of times this is with very long-term use and it's also a very slight risk. There's no evidence that it is causing cancer. A lot of times what it's doing is slowing down the body's ability to stop these cancers before they become a problem. The next medication that we're gonna talk about is Cytopoint. Now, Cytopoint 
is this the only one of these medications that's usually given as an injection. Some of the others can be, but this is the only one that the only way to give it is an injection. Now, what is its method mechanism of action? So like Apoquil, it's also going to work on the JAX pathway. However, it's much, much more specific than Apoquil is because it doesn't bind JAX receptor. It actually is going to bind one of those signaling molecules called IL-31. Now, IL-31 primarily has to do with the sensation of itch. So it's not going to be so helpful with preventing inflammation using this medication, but it will prevent the sensation of itch. And it does this because it's actually an antibody, just like your body produces antibodies to vaccines and pathogens, the little Y-shaped things that you see in diagrams that look like this, it's actually an antibody to this signaling molecule, and it binds it up and prevents that sensation of itch. Some of the advantages or pros of this are that it's a single injection every four to eight weeks. So instead of having to give pills every day, twice a day, every other day, depending on which other medication, you only have to remember every four to six weeks, potentially up to eight weeks in some patients, that they need another dose. So this can be super, super helpful for some dogs. It has very few side effects. So the listed side effects include a very rare occasional injection reaction. So having a little bit of pain, inflammation at the injection site, and there have been one or two cases where there's been an anaphylactic reaction. So it's extremely rare to have any side effects with this. And an overdose is almost impossible. So some of the other medications like prednisone you can give too much prednisone and see some dramatic effects. With Cytopoint, there really doesn't seem to be a significant limit to how much can be given. Now, some of the cons that I wanna talk about quick is that it doesn't necessarily manage your inflammation. So it doesn't in manage that inflammatory response nearly as well as Apoquil or prednisone. But it does treat that itch sensation very, very well. One of the other disadvantages is that it has to be given by a veterinarian. So all these other ones your vet can prescribe and you can go ahead and give them at home. But with this one, it does, at least in the US, have to be given by a veterinarian. And the other thing is, is that it's relatively expensive. So depending on the weight of the dog, it's going to be in that same ballpark as Apoquil is. Those are the three big ones that I primarily use the most in my practice. Now there's a few other ones that I want to quick mention that your vet may talk about or you guys may see on the internet. One of the other ones is diphenhydramine or Benadryl. This one, people are told to give this for allergies. So this medication does not actually seem to work very well for atopic dermatitis or allergies in dogs. It can be very good for an allergic reaction in a pinch but it's not super, super good compared to our other options that we already mentioned. So it's safe, but using it for allergies, especially contact allergies, is probably not gonna be helpful. And you're probably gonna see the sedative side effects before you actually see any anti-inflammatory action. Now the next one is cetirizine, otherwise known as Zyrtec. And this is actually potentially useful. It's much more useful than diphenhydramine or Benadryl, but it's really only useful if you, it's given consistently and you start before any exposure to those allergens. If you know your dog struggles really with ragweed pollen or something, you can start a couple weeks before the ragweed comes out and you can probably get away with using this in some cases. Talk to your veterinarian about it. And a lot of times it's not going to be enough to manage those allergies all by itself. The last drug that I want to mention is cyclosporin. This drug is also known as Atopica, which is a brand name for it. And this drug is mostly used as an immunosuppressant. Some of the things that I want you guys to know about this drug is that one, it typically is not going to be used as a first line defense uh, for several reasons, but mostly because it's so, so, so expensive. This is the by far the most expensive immunosuppressive slash anti-inflammatory, anti-itch medication that we have. It also has probably the largest range of side effects. I'm not gonna go into all the side effects just because it's not really that important. We also are going to often see a much higher rate of immunosuppression than we see with any of these other medications. And so we see the side effects that are associated with those. So if there's a fungal infection, they can be extremely 
sensitive to getting a fungal infection. They can be extremely sensitive to getting a bacterial infection. The dogs could potentially even be more prone to certain types of neoplasia, just like with Apoquil. This is probably the biggest disadvantage that I see other than all these other things is that it can take four to six weeks of administration of this medication before you actually start to see any of the advertised effects of anti-itch, anti-inflammatory, etc. I don't usually go to this, but it can be a really good alternative if none of our other medications are working. So if your vet jumps straight to this, at least have a conversation with them about why they're jumping to this and not at least considering some of our other options first. So hopefully this video has helped you guys to understand more about the medications that are used to treat allergies in dogs, especially all of our anti-itch medications. Now, if you wanna go and look at this video, you'll learn a little bit more about some strategies you can use at home to help manage our allergies in our dogs. Have a fantastic rest of your day, guys, and we will see you in the next video.